was that was fun. Oh, okay. Hold on, we're a little too tall. Hey, y'all. Thanks for uh, joining Azure's troubleshooting session. Oh, it was right there. <laughs> you know, these, li these live uh, demos these days, they give you more than what you bargained for. Uh, Hey, you know the one thing. The one thing our viewers know is this isn't rehearsed. So you know that's what they keep coming back for is the live, the the raw, the the good stuff. This so. is gonna be real raw. Let's let's be honest here. Very raw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bill, you want to kick it off for us, please? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of Come Cloud with us. Uh, my name is Abdul Kazi, um, and. Uh, I have my co-host, Christopher Gale. Um, hey, everybody. And we have a very special guest today. So, uh, you know, Azure McFarlane is here. So amazing to have you. Very, Thank you. Uh, yeah, many <laughs> honor to have you heard so much about you from Chris and others. So looking forward to, uh, to you to present. Um, <laughs> before we get into, you know, uh, the presentation, I want to want to ask, and I'm sure a lot of people have this question that they want to ask is, tell us stories about your name. Like when you <laughs> tell people, my name is Azure, like what's the person's response? Do they say, yeah, really? Or I, you know, I feel like at least people who know sort of me in the community, it's, it's a fun joke now that like, I still don't have sponsorship from Bill Gates. I've not heard from Satya. So if anybody can find him, <laughs> let me know. I'm still looking for swag. Uh, but yeah, I, on, um, when was it power platform conference? I think I'd put up cause I had done my nails and the color of like all the, you know, parts of the platform and somebody was like, wait, your name is really Azure. And I was like, yep, that's, that's me. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, I think it's kind of kismet that now I've, you know, I didn't start in technology or computer tech or anything. And now here I am and then working with Microsoft stack. So I'll take it as like a good luck charm, you know? <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. You should be like, hey, that's my, you know, I'm going to sue you guys for taking my name. Look, there, <laughs> Ma Mama Cloud, Mama Cloud has some, has some words. Uh, if she ever gets like whomever, marketing team, whoever came up with Azure, uh, she, she, she wants to talk to him. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And now, did you go to Ignite or were you only at the Power Platform Conference? No, I didn't make it to Ignite. I was actually away on business. It feels like all the conferences, sorry, I'm looking at like one computer screen, but my camera's here, uh, trying to look at y'all, trying to move this over. Um, I feel like all the conferences kind of came all at one time because I was at Dynamics Con the week before Power Platform Conference or attempted to, I got COVID like the first day uh, and then like saw the inside of a hotel room for the next five days. Um, but everything kind of happened in such quick succession. It was like conference season, right? Because Nordic Summit was happening. A couple of other things, oh, Summit and A happened around the same time. And I was there for all of like half a day um, before I had to be whisked off to, you know, another business trip. So yeah, I did not make it to Ignite. I have to go put sessions in my backpack because I had friends who were presenting and everything just looked so cool. I was sad to miss it. <laughs> Life, that's great. I, I was going to give up to a hard time being like, really? Just Power Platform Conference? Really? Come on. <laughs> was an awesome I'm trying. Like, I'm doing my best here. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> but no, it was a good time. It's good times. Good to meet you down there. Good to see you. It's a lot, of, a lot of great stuff. I mean, um, that was the one thing I, I know we just coming off the back of a, a session we had about, you know, Ignite, but it's like truly it was truly focused on the community from yeah. Power Platform Conference perspective. So it was it. really, really sweet. It was um, wonderful. Can't wait until next year. I mean, honestly, this was, for me, the first time that I was meeting people in the community, really. I had met maybe two or three folks over the time that I had been in, in the community. So I, I started doing Power Platform in about December of 2019, so almost three years now. Mm -hmm. Um, and got introduced to the tech stylers. So women in tech group, wonderful group, if anybody's interested in, in joining all people friendly um, in, I think like June of 2021, no, 2020. Yes, June of 2020. And then was doing all the virtual conferences, right? Pandemic hit. So I think I've met two or three people prior to that. And then it was so cool just to meet people <laughs> who have just 
refer to as friends in my computer for this whole entire time <laughs> to actually meet them and hug them. And there was like one day where I didn't even get to any sessions because it was just people just wanted to meet and to talk and to hang out. And I just, I loved it. It was a phenomenal you don't say. experience. <laughs> Like, where are you at? Oh, I'm in the speaker room. Uh, bring your lunch. Uh, you know, we're not going to have lunch. We're just going to talk. Gonna have, we're just team. <laughs> <laughs> it was great fun, regardless. I spent a lot of time hungry, but honestly, I was I was filled with love. So I think that's all that matters. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So... Reasons we brought you here, besides you know catching up and doing that. Well, now we're back to two D and no more three D, unfortunately. But, <laughs> um, RPA. So tell us a little bit about like what does it really mean? What does RPA mean to I don't know somebody like Abdul or myself or even our viewers? Yeah. Okay. So we've got RPA, which is Robotic Process Automation, right? Mm -hmm. um, RPA is kind of like what I like to call the like final frontier, like the, the last kind of resort technology in a way. So we're going to be talking about RPA at home because you can, if people don't know, you can get on your Windows 10 or 11 machine um, free RPA to play with around at home. There are some limitations to it. So we'll talk about like that. Um, but in a business context, RPA is really for, uh, let's say you have legacy technologies that you use, maybe they're on-prem, nothing in the cloud quite yet, and that could be for a variety of reasons, right? Like the technology is no longer supported, could be very hard or very expensive to transition to the cloud at this point if it's available. Um, you could also be using RPA if there's no API that's available for this uh, program that you're using, right? And we know that sometimes building custom APIs can get a little expensive. So mm -hmm. RPA comes in and it's able to uh, record like the sequences of clicks that you would do for a manual process. You can uh, tell it like click on this button at this time or open up this browser. One of the cool things I think is uh, that we, you know, we don't quite do in Cloudflows is go to a browser, type in, you know, google.com, search for something, and that's what RPA can help you do too. So if you've got, say, a web-based portal of sorts, you know, that you use for customers, your business, whatever the case is, this would also allow you to go input information into there or extract information too. Um, so we're going to see a little bit of that today in the demo too. So I've, I found this really cool. I've been working in RPA for about maybe like seven months or so. Um, and I was like, what on earth can I do with this just at home? Um, and then now we have a bit of a use case. Um, I'll say between the, like the work version, well, it's not really work version, but if you have a premium license for RPA, you do get more features with it. So if you have a premium license, so if you have RPA at home, you can get a trial of a premium license for 90 days. You don't mm -hmm. get charged for it. You don't have to put credit card information in there, mm -hmm. um, which is great. And one of the biggest advantages is that you can integrate cloud flows with a desktop flow. So you could trigger a desktop flow using a cloud flow. Uh, today, we won't be doing that because for whatever reason, um, the runtime machine app wasn't working for my computer, couldn't quite connect my computer mm -hmm. to the correct environment. So that's okay. You can still use them separately. Um, so if you're using desktop flows at home without that cloud flow integration, uh, you'll just have to manually trigger your flow. So that's how you, you would do that. And so that's kind of what we're gonna do today. We're going to use both a cloud flow and a desktop flow at the same time, uh, not integrated, but separate. And we're gonna use both of them. So, uh, well, what do you say we cover the stage and here we go? Okay, let's. Um, now you know, of course, the warning of things going live, so yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. see. Okay, you know, that's what makes it fun and enjoyable. <laughs> Okay, so I th what am I going to do first? I am, okay, so I'll explain the use case. Um, use cases, we're going to take COVID test receipts, like from a pharmacy, from a grocery store, and we're going to upload them into an insurance portal, one of my older, like, insurance portals. Uh, so for context, here in the United States, back in January, um, the government administration said that insurance companies uh, should reimburse folks for buying COVID tests. There's stipulations for it, right? I think it's eight COVID tests per month, uh, but you'd go to the store, 
grab your receipt, you know, purchase your item, grab your receipt, that receipt then, what depending on the different type of insurance company, they may have you fax it, snail mail it, whatever the case is. Mine let me do it electronically. Um, so I'd have to take that receipt, snap a photo of it, and then upload it to a portal. Uh, I have to be honest, when it comes to paper receipts these days, I'm not that great at keeping track of them. Uh, <laughs> Nobody is. You're not alone, honestly. Right? So that's I, kind of how this I came up. Sometimes, and you know. Some, some, sometimes. So that's kind of how this came about, right? Because sometimes you go to the store, you may not be going directly home, and you're not going to sit down and do this right away when you get your computer. At least I don't. Um, and sometimes I'm buying eight at a time. Sometimes the store has two, whatever the case is, right? Um, but then you have to remember to do all of this. I use process monitor or process advisor to see how long it actually takes me to do this from start to finish, from, you know, like getting the photo up into the portal. It takes like three minutes. It's really not that big of a deal, but it's a repetitive thing that I would do every once in a while and thought it would be fun to automate it because why would you not spend like four hours automating something that really only takes three minutes to do? <laughs> <laughs> Right? Or, 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 or we, yeah. So. Because that's maybe just for you, but it helps everybody else out, right? You, you, you never, you never know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly um, change one thing, and then I'm going to show you what the cloud flow looks like and what the desktop flow looks like, and then we'll run it to show what it actually looks like too. Okay. All right. So all I have is, so originally what I had for this um, demo, when I was able to integrate it with Cloudflow, I had to switch computers and then essentially rebuild this whole thing, was I had a Cloudflow. Um, all right. Okay. Sorry, this might be a little small, so I'll increase this. Okay, so originally what this flow had was uh, a couple of things. I was making it a little fancy. So right now we're just using a two-step flow. We're going to use OneDrive, so the I've renamed the steps, but the, the, the trigger is when a file is like uploaded to OneDrive, and then it's we're going to rename the file. Um, when I first built this flow and we had some CloudFlow integration, I also used Azure Key Vault so that you could store your passwords, your username and password, and then we would just put it into the flow. So it would pass it into the desktop flow as a variable. So you have the ability to pass parameters into your desktop flows as well. So anything that you have from a cloud flow, you can dump it into a desktop flow. Um, great thing about the desktop flow is you can also have encryption in there too. So we don't necessarily need Key Vault. Uh, you can put it in there as well. If you wanted to use, say, you know, a, a password manager, you could also have RPA click around and grab your password and everything from there too. So there's a, a variety of things that you could do to make this your own. Um, so I wasn't able to get the screen share to work on my phone um, so that I could also display it. But what I have is just the OneDrive app on my phone. Um, and what I do is I have a receipt that I just upload into, um, let's see, we'll do, pull it up now. So right now my OneDrive is empty. All right. So right now OneDrive is empty. I have no files in there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a, a photo of this receipt. And I like that OneDrive right now has, you can really just push a button to upload a photo. So we're gonna go ahead and snap a photo of this. Okay, so we've got a photo of the receipt. We'll hit confirm. It says, do you wanna edit it? Nope. And it's gonna save as just like this random scan. So I think I have it as a as like uploading as a PDF instead of a JPEG. And I had switched it back to JPEG. There we go. Okay, very quickly. So this is a scan. We're gonna have it rename to the name of the test and a date. So we can go watch this Cloudflow run in a little bit. Ignore all my weird friends from today. Um, and what I've done just to make this really simple is I have the same exact, um, I've just hard coded like the name of the 
test. That's it. So I'm using one called Binax now. Okay. So that was really quick. The flow succeeded. Cool. So when we go back here, ta-da, we have it uploaded as the name of the test and just the date. So to make this more robust in the future, if I got, I normally get the same brand of tests, we could put a switch case in and then maybe instead of using OneDrive, we could just use a button flow and say, okay, I got you know this brand of test and let it run. All right, so we've got this now and all this flow did was just to rename what this was. And then we're gonna go to desktop flow. So we're gonna go to Power Automate Desktop and here is what the flow looks like. And so just running, I had to do this kind of quick and dirty today because the other one didn't work. Um, but what we're telling it to do is we're going to open a browser instance. There are a few ways that you can do this. You could tell over here in the actions pane, we could say, um, let's type in Chrome for Google Chrome. We can launch a new Chrome instance. We could also use a web recorder or a screen recorder to say, hey, why don't you go click on the Chrome button here at the bottom? So you could do those too. There are some nuances to using either one. So launch a new Chrome instance means it's just going to launch a, a new window for you. If we were to use the recorder and go click down here, if you already have a window open, it's going to error out because it says, hey, there's already a, a window open. So if you are using, say, a computer where you're doing multiple tasks, right, and don't just have a, a, a computer dedicated to... Um, using RPA, then this is a case where you'd say, let's just use the, the launch feature instead of trying to use the, the web recorder. So we'll use an action. Um, we're going to maximize the window. We're going to launch the, um, the insurance website. So in this case, we're using CVS Caremark. Um, we're going to enter in username and password. So you can see here, it's got my email address. Y'all already have this. This is not private information. Uh, and it's encrypted my password, so that works for me too. And then it's gonna take us completely through all the screens. So the only thing that we had to wait on was the receipt really to be uh, like formatted in the way that we wanted. Now, if we had the Cloudflow integration, we would just put a little bit of a delay in between the Cloudflow and then starting the action for running the desktop flow. And then this would run all on its own. In this case, since we don't have them integrated, we just press the run button. So hopefully, I can't tell which window it's going to open the browser. And so we'll start this. And if it happens to switch to the other window, I'll stop sharing screen and then and swap that. Um, but really what happens as we're going down the flow in this window, just like a cloud flow, how you see the check marks going down, instead of check marks, you'll just see each of these steps highlighted as it's going through. And there ends up being down here at the bottom where it says ready, there's a timer that starts to show you how long that the flow has been running. So, okay, let's see. I have a feeling it's gonna open on my other windows. Let's let's see if that's gonna be the case. Oh, nope, okay, here we go. And sometimes it takes like one or two tries for this to go. Okay, see, live demo. All right, let's try that one more time. Great, yeah, sometimes you get a little bit of an error down here and that's totally fine. So we'll try one more time. Well, come on, no hands, right? Not touching any of this. There you go. Okay, fingers crossed. So for some of this, what I've done is used a web recorder to record some of these things. But sometimes the um, RPA Power Automate desktop doesn't quite recognize what elements are on the screen. So you have to say, go click this button or go click this hyperlink. Um, and sometimes like for you know this page that was waiting a little bit, I have built in delays because if you click a little too fast, it won't be you know, available for you to use. So in this case, it's just filling in the name of the test, the name or the, where I bought it from, the date, the price, um, all of this I end up having hard coded. Um, okay, it's selecting the file from us from OneDrive. Oh, it actually went really quickly to attach the receipt. Earlier, it was like taking a little bit of time to scroll through. Um, we don't need a comment and we've submitted our claim. Oops. Okay, forgot to check the box, but we almost had it there. So if I were to, you know, just check this box, it would have submitted the claim for us. And there it is. We've submitted our COVID test. 
receipt. And then we just wait for the check in the mail or the automatic reimbursement into, you know, whatever account um, if you've set it up that way. But for mine, it's just going to be, I'm going to wait for a check. Now I've submitted this to this portal that I don't have any insurance tied to. So I'm just going to get a letter in the mail at some point that says, hey, you actually don't have a plan with us. Uh, so we're not going to reimburse you, which is, which is totally fine. Um, but that is a home at home use case of RPA that I've made. That's awesome, actually. So, um, and how can you replicate this to other accounts? So let's say, because this is only for you, right? So let's yeah. say for your partner or for your other family members, how easy would that be to replicate? Ooh, that's a good question. It depends on the insurance that they have, to be honest. So that's something- Family, let's say, for example, let's talk about the family, right? Mm -hmm. If everybody has the same insurance, mm -hmm. uh, would you have been, and let's say everybody has the same credentials login so like you were showing cvs right pharmacy let's say so if you're doing it for your family members would you have to in does the input changes a lot because you had to input all the information right mm, so it depends on so that's where like an enhanced viable product for this would be is to build in more of that robustness because right now i have it as I buy the same test, the price hasn't changed for it or anything, right? So if somebody were to then go upload a different brand, it wouldn't do all of what it's supposed to do. It would do just how I've programmed it, right? Because I've hard coded everything. Um, so one of my future plans is to make that more robust. And instead of being able to upload it to OneDrive, it might then become a button flow that people have to use. And maybe they'll just type in the first couple of letters of what the brand name is, and then it would take care of the rest. Uh, we could also use AI Builder. So you could have it read the receipt to gather all the information to then put into the flow, um, into the cloud flow, and then into the desktop flow. So there's varying levels of things. Right now, it would just be my partner would have to submit a receipt with buy next that cost twenty three dollars and ninety nine cents. <laughs> so in the future, maybe we'll have this uh, more more flushed out. But for the time being, this is this is what we're using. No, that's, that's an awesome, awesome use case. Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, the nice part about this, I mean, I immediately thought about you know a lot of the stuff we do. We always talk about that. Well, you know, where IT meets like folks that aren't good with tech and this doesn't require a lot of tech it's just mm -hmm. you're you're piecing together a workflow right you're recording some things you're piecing together at well okay go grab this maybe i stored my credential as, as something here you use this every time i run through this particular workflow but, um it's it's really nice to kind of see how quickly that just flows <laughs> it, it did it for me, right? And ideally, um, if I had my computer on and running, if I had gone to the pharmacy, right, right when I snap that photo, everything kind of kicks off. Um, and then I don't have to worry about it. Or, you know, in the case that we don't have the cloud flow and the desktop flow integrated, at least mm -hmm. it would keep queuing the receipts for me. And then at the end of the month or once a month, once, once a week, I just go press a button and it would repeat everything for me, you know. Um, oh. I, I totally want to do this for like my expense reimbursement process now. I, I, I know we have a pretty good one, but it's like doo, 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 doo. why not? I I had um I was on a business trip recently, and I had created just a really basic power app to collect all my expenses and just snap a photo of the receipt, and then it didn't matter if I held on to it or not. And I just put it in a SharePoint list, right? Attached mm -hmm. the photo, and then it was going to have a flow. Um, go ahead and like rename all the files and then drop it where it needed to be. Like automation just makes things so easy. Um, and in this case for this particular demo, like once I kind of got the hang of um, understanding some of the nuances in RPA with distractions today, it took me three hours, but that's because I was also like on Twitter a lot. And, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> So to rebuild, it didn't take that much time. Um, but yeah, just kind of learning the ins and outs and deciding how you want to do things with it. Do you want to say, I want to click on a browser and open it? Or do I want RPA to say launch a different instance? Is it that you want to click on um, a button? Or do you want to tell it here is an element that I want to click on? Um, maybe it's a hyperlink. There's different terminology in RPA, but it, I feel like it's pretty... Um, 
user friendly, like the drop, the drag yeah. and drop kind of um, interface to use. And then my really my learning was from I did the RPA in a day, um, just the online content, not even like a live class and just went through that to learn some of the things. And then it's just kind of playing around with it. So for more robust use cases, right, it would take more time to learn what to do. Sure. But in this instance, you know, taking a few hours to learn how to do this wasn't wasn't bad at all. And there's a question just basically on that segue then there's, uh, it says, is there a good Microsoft Learn module on uh, Power mm. Platform? Yes, yes. So Microsoft Learn is great. You can get the content. Microsoft also offers Microsoft and Microsoft Partners. If you go to the events website, so if you could type into Google like Microsoft Events, they have live classes that you can take for any part of the Power Platform. So virtual agents in a day, dashboard in a day. Um, and these are completely free and available to you. The content is if you want the actual um, like PDFs, if you want to work through it on your own, those are also available um, on GitHub. Hub. So you could do like a self-paced learning if you'd like. Typically, those don't come with any sort of explanation as to why you're doing what you're doing. So that's where, you know, like YouTube videos may come in helpful. Um, the live in a day classes might be helpful as well. Awesome. awesome. I'm just looking up a link too. I know I, I've seen a few of the yeah, courses. Let me see if I can. search engine is not behaving. But here we go. And there's another question. Uh, it says, I am working on an unmanaged RPA and want to host it on a Bastion server so that it is not tied to an individual machine. Any suggestions or best practices? I would that That's a good like, question. Then. I think that just like went over my head. <laughs> Like 400 level, I love it. Yeah, that that went that went real up here. So you know what? Um, I can take that question and I can ask around and I can get back to you. Um, never dropped. I can see some of the comments in here. Um, if you want to find me on Twitter and drop that in my DMs or send me a tweet, we'll find the answer. Somebody in the community is absolutely going to know it. I'm just. I mean, I can I can talk a little bit about you know bashing and whatnot, but the rest of it, yeah, I don't know how to piece it together. So I need some yeah. help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that and this would be a learning up, right? Like this is a learning opportunity for both of us. So I'd be absolutely uh, like enthralled to figure out how to do this um, for for anything that comes up in the future. All right, I think I found intro. All this is I have. Platform, but... I don't think I'm logged in, so I can't quite put it in, but I can put it at least in the private chat here. That's it's started. Oh, here we jobs. go. Here we go. I found one. So there is a get started with Power Automate. I'm going to throw that in the channel now. That should be a good one. It's getting started. It says get started flows, but it's it's really it's about 50 minutes, 60 minutes. And it works through a flow that automatically saves email, does a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, I remember going through that, too. Yeah, it helps troubleshoot, too. Works. Works. Yeah, if you're looking for beginner content for Power Autumn, well, for RPA, uh, Tomasz po uh, Pozacek is like the RPA guy. He wrote the In a Day content. He recently also taught a workshop at um, at Power Platform Conference. Uh, Vivek Babashi is also into RPA. I know Geetha Siva Asylum does a little bit as well. So there are people in the community that are absolutely willing to help you that are more experienced than I am at the at the moment. Um, and if you're on Twitter, use you know the hashtag Power Addicts, Power Automate. Feel free to like reach out to us online, and people are happy to answer questions. If you're looking more for Power Automate 101 in general, so cloud flows, um, some names that you might want to look at are April Dunham. She's wonderful. She works as a developer advocate at Microsoft. Uh, Shane Young, he runs Power Apps 911. Those are really great places to start too. I see my friend Giselle is on here, Giselle Aiken. She just put out her first YouTube video on how to make a cloud flow. So y'all should check that out as well. There's so much content online for you to get started. There's the Microsoft Learn, folks have blogs. Um, yeah, just start exploring. And if you need any help, we're here for you. Yeah, just ask, just ask. We're watching. We're always watching. Yeah, we're 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 always watching. Probably on Twitter, like a little. We're supposed a little to be working, much. and we're on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look. Mm. Even even I take to Twitter for questions that I have or group chats. Right. Somebody somebody's bound to know the answer. So, I find Twitter to be a, a good place to to network and to also find uh, kind of like the 
It's like the forums, just not the official Microsoft forums. It's a different <laughs> place. <laughs> All right, so I, I do have a question. And this is something I, I know I should know, but I don't. So uh, taking the example that you built, and, and I know there's this, uh, you know, attended versus unattended approach, right? Mm -hmm. of, and we can get into the dynamics there. But if I were to create it and it's an RPA that's running on my device, mm -hmm. do I, one, have to be logged in? If I'm not logged in, what happens? Two, are there other ways around that where I can do something differently and have it trigger if I'm not logged in? Mm. Yeah, so typically computer on, logged in. Um, some of these questions are also a good one for me because I don't remember. It's been a while since I've actually worked on an RPA project. I worked on about six months ago for a client, just a small step, but questions I can get the answers to that I don't remember off the top of my head. So this is why I keep bringing myself back. I ask the hard questions. You, yeah, you're asking the hard. Look, I, I told you this was going to be like quick and dirty. I'm still learning this too. <laughs> uh, so that said, so and I know that a bunch of the stuff you showed was was super interesting. But is there something else? Like I know there's a lot. If you just install Power Automate Desktop and you start looking at the list. Mm -hmm. There's a ton. You like you could scroll through, probably spend an hour just looking through each one of these. What does this do? What does this do? But is there something that, um, you know, this is your moment to like school me on something that I don't know that is out there? Something that's intriguing. It's like Chris, you know, you should really check this out, or the rest of our viewers should check out. In the software itself, mm -hmm. or yeah, I really like. So I'm gonna share my screen again. What I really like about um, RPM is. No, we're not trying to leave the studio. We did my share screen. Ah, don't, don't hit that button. <laughs> need that button. Definitely done that before. So I don't know that we shipped you a parachute for this one. So, you know. <laughs> okay. So one thing that I really like is we know that when you go into like the, the web browser for the build cloud flows, there's all these different options. You see all these different connectors, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can type in the name of a connector, SharePoint, Outlook, whatever the case is, we have kind of the same thing here too with actions. We don't have the ability to do things in the cloud with RPA, which is why you could do a cloud flow to trigger a desktop flow that then could trigger a cloud flow again, right? It mm -hmm. can kind of come full circle, but you have the ability to do a search for a few things. So let's do, I, there's one for SharePoint um, that's in preview right now. So it kind of has the same thing of, look either for an application name or what you want to do. So we could put in like copy file and it would have a copy file action in there, not necessarily tied to OneDrive or anything else. This would be some file that lives somewhere on your computer that you could copy, right? Um, the language and the logic is slightly different than the cloud flows. So that part I have not quite mastered yet, but something for me to learn as well, like expressions and cloud flows, you know, you build out your expressions here, they use like percent signs and, and whatnot too. Um, another thing that I really like is when you are building, so over here you have variables. In this case, we only ended up using one variable uh, for, like, I hard coded just for the demo today for simplicity, like the name of the file that we'd be choosing, but we could make this a variable in a cloud flow and change mm -hmm. that. We could also make this an expression and concatenate it with whatever the ending is. So in this case, we decided that we're from OneDrive, it's going to be a PDF. Um, but over here, what I think is really cool is you can add your UI elements, so your user interface elements, and you can actually see what they look like. So we could do, you know, either for giggles, let's do a recorder. Um, let me pull up just like a browser instance over here. Okay. So if we do a recorder, this little recorder pops up for us and we can record all the clicks on our screen. We'll be able to see these red boxes that pop up that kind of symbolize our user interface elements. So you can see like here it says, this is a button, right? Or this is navigation or this is a header. Um, so it'll give you, and you can rename these in your desktop flow as needed. Sometimes RP will say, okay, this is, this is a button and then it 
when you run it, it's like, I don't recognize what this is. So you have the ability to kind of train it. Um, and we could say, we want to add our own element to this. So we could, it pops up to be another recorder, but specific to, we're telling it exactly what we want it to click on. So if it doesn't recognize it from the screen recorder, we can do, you know, control left click and click on it and it'll say, okay, this button. And then it gives you some kind of GUI. So we would rename it to whatever we would like, but it recognizes it as a button now. Um, sometimes hyperlinks will come out kind of weird. Um, and then you would just do this UI element picker to say, okay, I want this specifically. You could also say, I want you to look for the name of this thing. So it could be, we are looking for a button with the name of sign in. So there's a couple of ways that you could do this. Um, something else that I really like is you can actually see what you've clicked on for your elements or what the recorder has picked up. So over on this side, um, for each uh, like pane that we're kind of opening inside our browser, you know, we see you have button maximize, we have edit phone number, uh, date of purchase, and it'll show you exactly what it's recorded from your recording or your UI element, um, like for you to actually click on things, which I think is kind of neat. And then you can come over here, right? These are pretty clear. So edit name, if we needed to make this a little bit more robust, we could say edit first name, right? Um, combo box name of test, it kind of picks up the elements that are around it too. It's like the title of a box, which is neat. Um, you know, it's a continue button. And if you've got more than one, it'll add, you know, like a number to it. So it'll increment for you, but you could say this is button on whatever page. Um, I think to me, for whatever reason, I think being able to see what I'm clicking on is kind of fun. And then you can also then use these particular things that you've added and use them as like repeat elements inside your desktop flow too. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So I, I like this. I think it's kind of fun. Another puzzle to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right. Um, I know I had another question. I had another question that just popped out of my head. But, um, just thinking about you know some of the other stuff. As your from your perspective, how many how many folks have you worked with that are really like doing anything with? And I know there's a couple things with mm -hmm. like Active Directory and Azure and CyberArk, different IAM things. But anybody really like utilizing it for that, or is it more of just say I just need a credential and then I'm off to the races to do something? The most common that I've seen right now is for credentials and anything else that, so if you're using Active Directory, more than likely you'd probably end up putting that like in a cloud flow, right? Yeah. Um, so for Power Automate Desktop, really I've seen it, you're just using like Key Vault is that. Um, anything I would say where you need to do like pulling personnel files, um, Outlook profiles, all that, you would do that in a Cloudflow. So you wouldn't do that in here, if that makes sense. Okay. This is purely the stuff that the Cloudflow can't do. So whether it's, you know, go to a browser and log into a portal or you're using technology that's on your desktop. So it might be physically writing to an Excel sheet. We have the ability in a Cloudflow to do that with um, Excel, like for uh, Excel online. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it might be, you're just going, you don't want to go back to a Cloudflow and say, do all this you might just say in the desktop flow, go ahead and just write all this information from one system to another as the programs are both open. So this would really be using for what's on physically on your computer and anything in a browser. Anything else can be done kind of in the cloud. Cool. cool, cool. Yeah, I was just thinking, I guess, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the recent work I've been doing, um, you know, good, bad, and different. It's uh, surrounding identity and identity management for folks that, you know, maybe you're uh, privilege access management, some mm -hmm. type of you know password keeper, or whatever else too. So, I'd be curious. I, I haven't played, but I'm kind of inspired now to go and tinker and toy and see if I can, you know, find those answers because there there are a few things like I, I see CyberArk here, but I don't see um, like Delinea or Thicotic other. You know, yeah, I'm not I'm not a cyber security person, so I can't I can't help you there. <laughs> That's quite all right. That's why we have these sessions. So everybody it is. Learns. Everybody learns, right? I always take away something. There's generally a question that I can't answer. I'm like, okay, that's that is something for me to learn. So, so what are the other use cases you've seen um, from corporate aspect, right? Corporations are moving to this. Uh, what are the typical use cases? 
Um, so a previous organization that I came from wasn't using Power Automate Desktop. They were using another form of RPA. Uh, but one of the use cases that I saw for that was we would log, um, so I used to work in pharmaceuticals, we would log our tick, like our deviations and like product deviations, um, process deviations from our manufacturing plant in a system that was on-prem. Um, so it, what we would like to do is be able to pull that data, right? Uh, put it into an Excel sheet and then report that into Power BI. So we would use for things like that to pull data from like an ERP system, um, and then integrate it into something more cloud. Uh, earlier this year, I was on a small project for a company that was converting from an older, like legacy type of um, RPA. So Microsoft bought Softmotive, and I forget the other company within the past couple of years. Um, yeah, I, I don't recall the name off the top of my head, but they were transitioning from Softmotive, which is you know no longer supported anymore, and then transitioning their systems into RPA. But it would have been these like systems that don't really exist. Like this was the one technology that they had. Um, it was too expensive to replace at this point, or there just isn't a substitute in their processes were so robust that in order to convert them to cloud, it, it would have been a, a multi like year process at that point, if that makes sense. So this is kind of like a shortcut to keep using like your same technology without having to convert it too much. Um, there is somebody that I met in the community at Power Platform Conference who is looking to use RPA as uh, with AI as kind of like a sorting hat. So their company does uh, some sort of subscriptions. They used to bill on an annual basis their clients for you know their subscriptions, and now they've moved to like a monthly billing model. So if you can imagine that causes a bunch of chaos that now you're having to keep track of POs and invoices that are coming in from different clients. They all don't look the same. Um, so they're trying to use AI to do the sorting that comes into you know, a shared mailbox and then also using RPA to go into like say Salesforce um, and gather information or fill in information and upload documents to Salesforce and then doing you know, other things that need to happen for uh, their clients. So kind of a, a varied look at a couple of the use cases that I've seen. I just play in it for fun. Um, there was uh, one project that recently almost came across my desk that was taking things from an access database and putting it into Excel or the reverse. Access? Who uses Access anymore? <laughs> There are people that still use, there are still people that use access. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> so in that case, I, I can't remember the full details of this particular um, project, but it might have been that they're just trying to get everything out of access and into sheets and then, just, you know, doing something else with it. But that one was a very simple, it was going to be like translating from one to the other. And that was kind of it for whatever their, their purpose was. But generally it's like a, when cloud, can't cloud flows can't do it like this is this is what you would use but it's mm -hmm. not i would say highly encouraged to just be like i'm gonna just put rpa in a process just because right there's licensing costs associated with it um right it's just it's not the it's not the latest technology like rpa isn't new per se right. um so it's, it's existed for a while so as we move more towards like cloud infrastructure businesses we probably want to focus more on on doing cloud and when they can't they fill in with rpa yeah, I, I haven't seen much traction, to be honest, on the RPA, but mm. why do you think that is? Is it cost or is it the skill set or uh, like, you know, it hasn't really picked that much. Like uh, now I'm seeing a lot of power platform and mm. all these things moving, uh, but it wasn't before. I would probably say just the technologies people have at their companies, since a lot of places are really now, you know, using Office 365. Nobody's really using, you know, SharePoint on-prem anymore or anything. And so in that case, you might just not need it in general. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like if you're if you're not using some legacy technologies, if you're not doing a transition from like a sunset technology to something cloud related, then RPA probably won't be useful for you, if that makes sense. Okay. okay. So if you don't need it, you don't you don't really need it. And it's interesting. I mean it I I kind of look at this as uh, you know, you've done the so I guess the difference between like a web recording versus a you know desktop recording. Mm -hmm. It's something that honestly Microsoft has had for a while. Like it's it's gone all the way back to even system center. 
because we had it within System Center and Operations Manager, we could say, all right, I want to go through and record something step by step, mm -hmm. create triggers, send alerts, whatever else, do a multi-process like monitor, if you will. Now, of course, it's mm -hmm. all cloud-based, Azure Monitor, Logic Apps, whatever else, but it's kind of crazy to see. You know, it's like it's all over the place. So uh, let's be honest, you know, it's it's kind of been driven all over the place. But yeah, that's a good question, Abdul. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm I'm going to ask a different side to that question, if you don't mind. If folks were really interested, like where where should they start? Like just like here's one thing. Like maybe we found something in the corner that somebody's has done for the past like once a week, every week. And where do we start? Where should somebody start? See if you can replicate what they're doing using Power Automate Desktop. Uh, you can get the free trial, right? So it won't cost your business anything to try it out for the 90 days. I think mm -hmm. mine actually might have been. I know for some of like the developer accounts, they say like, oh, use it for 90 days. And then you have to use it like once in that 90 days for that like period to kind of start over again. Um, so I'd been using RPA on my on my work computer for a couple months, just using the trial, nothing in production, but just kind of testing things out. Um, so I would say in, in that respect, go there. I am not a licensing specialist, so I could not tell you how much it would end up costing you in order to do this. I think also assessing whether you can use a Cloudflow for it versus RPA. Um, right. And that cost benefit analysis as well as is it going to be more expensive to you know, build this for something that we do once a week that may take a couple of minutes or like what are, what are the alternatives for sure. that if there, if there are, if any. Yeah, I was going to say, you really need a PhD in Microsoft licensing. Nobody <laughs> honestly understands Microsoft licensing. It's so complicated and you're like, wow. I thought I saw recently somebody had gotten a certification in licensing. Like, is that, that's a thing now? They it is to... it is a thing they have okay. there's some portal i think you can go through in each different aspect of the environment okay. it's like i'm a licensing specialist for this for I that day be, let's yeah, be honest i, I think be, it's for I that day specialist <laughs> yeah. for on-prem but i haven't done that a long okay. time now for cloud because cloud i think it's subscription based so to, chris to your point yes though, there are licensing and even as you to your point, uh, specialist, but they were mainly on-prem on the SQL server, Windows and whatnot, mm. but yeah, um, nothing on the cloud side, but yeah, it has been really complicated to yeah. figure out. I, I will say this, and I know at least my business, we, we work with an excellent partner. These folks know that stuff inside and out. They've got some, I don't know, it's like some system, they just put information in and they, they cram something and next thing you know, it's like, here you go, this is what we think. Mm -hmm. um, so those folks, you want to rely on those folks for sure. Their partners have a good handle on that stuff. Yeah, I'm like cloud cloud flows. I can I can I think I have the basics of what licensing is. Right, you've got your standard licensing that comes with like your e sub subscription, and that's included, and that gives you standard. And then you've got your per user licenses, and then pay as you go. Now, I've never seen anybody use that quite yet, um, but with Power Automate Desktop, it's like whether you're using attended or unattended mode, that also is like that affects your, your licensing as well. Um, yeah, so I think that one's a little bit more, a little bit more nuanced from what I can tell. And I, I some of them are like per, per run, per this, you get 500 API calls or whatever the case is. And I just, I leave that to the professionals. <laughs> I'm a different kind of professional. <laughs> different, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> We can't possibly cover it all. We, we'll try, or we'll try and find the right answer, but it's impossible to cover it. Yeah, I think even Microsoft gets a little confused sometimes. Yeah, they do. I think <laughs> so if anybody from Microsoft is listening, we know you get confused. It's okay. <clears throat> and we want your help to simplify this. Yeah, <laughs> would be nice. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, um, I don't see any other questions. Abdul, if you don't have any other questions, I would say this. Azure, thank you. This has been a pleasure. It's great seeing you in, well, at least in 2D, unfortunately not in person this time. But uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for your insights, for your wonderful session, um, for everything you shared with us. So. Of course. Thank you for thank you for inviting me. This was great. And I think we've we had this plan for a while and maybe had to reschedule a few times. And so it's, it's yeah. great to actually be able to do it.
Thank you so and much. For everybody that's watching, we actually schemed. We were thinking maybe we could do it remotely from the Power Platform Conference. I'm glad we didn't try to do that. I think that would have been, I don't know, maybe the microphone would have ended up in the pool or, you know, somewhere out of the place. <laughs> um, One of the T-Rexes would have taken it away, right? I mean, we could have done like a mini session from the from one of the coasters or something, I guess, but... Uh, next time. Next time. Think, well, yeah, I maybe saw not, some... because Chris actually, uh, Azure, I don't know if you know this or not, but Chris went to Ignite and then he was presenting a virtual tour from Ignite. So me and Chris were uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was like wow. Yeah, me and Chris were basically SME for uh, a session. So we were moderating the session, and then yeah, Chris was there, and then yeah, I'm like, that, how weird is that? You are at Ignite and doing a virtual session. And doing for a virtual session. <laughs> yeah, I saw some people like doing their impromptu like podcasts and everything. I was like, I was not thinking ahead. Uh, that much to remember to bring a better camera for my computer, right? I was trying to get away with not having to bring my work computer and my personal computer and everything else. So <laughs> some people have it on, on lock. This is my first experience with in person. Clearly, I I don't know if I did it right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, you had fun. Yeah, yeah, we all had fun. Never get it wrong, actually. So yeah. I had a I had a wonderful time. So I I honestly can't wait for whatever the next in person event is. So I know. You well, it's, a, a next, it's in Vegas, so and I've never been. So, okay, I'm gonna teach you how to play blackjack. Oh boy. <laughs> well, I gotta start <laughs> saving up. I think that's what, that's what. I... You know what? There are some like cheaper places to go to, so we don't have to go play it like the Bellagio. We can play at some other places that are more reasonably priced. But I was just preparing myself to lose most everything that I had. So. Oh. That's... <laughs> Okay, uh, we we want to make sure that the title and deed of your house like stay where your home is and for your car, right? Uh, <laughs> That's true. Like leave all your cards. Don't in put the your keys room. down. Don't put. Your, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Maybe you. like you're gonna yeah, carry in the so summer session. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're we're gonna get you up to stuff and and maybe put you on some phone games for some practice. You've got a couple of months. Yeah. Sounds great. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in again. Azure, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. you. And until next time, take care, everyone. Thanks Bye, so much. Bye, y'all. Take care. Bye. Bye.